Lord. Welcome to True Hebrews United of the Lord, Yeshua, this you love, holiness, instructor, discipleship, drill, starts your about to get into the book like usual. Definitely give all honor to our high who got you sure, the only begotten of the Father. I thank all the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers across the whole planet, preaching and teaching the uh, uh, holy word. We're here on this Sabbath day with some uh, potential Lord willing brothers and sisters. You know, this is my first time meeting them, so I don't know if they're safe or whatnot. But uh, I pray that you guys keep the commandments, keep living holy, and you guys make it into the kingdom. And uh, definitely thank all the sisters and sisters in the police. Keep standing. I know you're in the trenches. Reinforcements will come. Keep up the good work. Keep pressing all the brothers and sisters that watch Facebook, YouTube. Hey, keep pressing all the ones that are just watching. Hey, time is ticking. Hey, it says, the day you hear the Lord's voice, harden not your heart. If you know it's in the book and it's rightly divided, you should be on obeying it. And it says, he gave some apostles, some pastors, some pastors, some pastors. Uh, uh, some pastors and some teachers for the perfecting the saints. Who do you have to perfect you? Where is your minister? Where is your pastor out there? You cannot be no YouTube Facebook disciple. You cannot lead yourself. Either you're a minister or you're a brother. If you're a brother, you need a watchman for your soul. If you're a minister, you should be going out there and saving souls. It's either one or the other. It's not, I'm going to take this Bible and just leave myself and do my own thing. There are no rogue people in the body of Amashiach, in the body of Christ. The, being rogue and being solitude and onto yourself does not fit the body of Christ. So with all that said and being done, oh yeah, let me call up uh, uh, Brother Vince. Come up here. Amen. Oh, Mike, I appreciate you pressing through. So what do you want to say to the camera? Oh. Amen. Okay. He's a man of many words. <laughs> Great go. Amen. Appreciate you, man. Keep pressing. So we will say, based on well, everybody, keep your heads up. I know it's hard, but time will get better. It's driving to the king. Uh, Amen. So Amen. Three dub. So sorry, I appreciate you, sister. Hello. That's all the guy. Good shot. Transgressor is hard. We the Almighty is like. Let's go. Let's get to the book. With all that said, being done, let's let the fingers do the walking and Scriptures do the talking. That's right. Mark chapter 10. That's going to be hard with this book. Say amen when you got it, so I know. Amen. Because, uh, you know, Facebook, YouTube, they got away. The bird in the half is soon in the bush. You guys ready? Amen, amen. Okay, let's get it. Mark chapter 10, verse 17. Let's get it. And who has gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and said unto him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? That's a powerful question right there. Persons want to know, what do I need to do to be saved? That's a question every individual should ask. What do I need to do to be saved? How can I make it in the kingdom? What, how can I not go to the lake of fire? Let's keep going. Verse 18. And Yeshua said unto him, Why call thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. Thou knoweth the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. For fraud not. Honor thy father and thy mother. Some people say, See, those are the only commandments. No, that's just a few commandments. You got to keep. It says, If you love me, keep my commandments. And that's all of them. Let's keep going. And he answered and said unto Master, All these have I observed from my youth. So he was already living righteous. This man was already living righteous. Let's keep going. And Yeshua beholded him, loved him, and said, One thing thou lacketh. 
Go thy way, sell what's over thou have, give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and uh, and come take up your cross and follow me. And when he uh, and when he has uh, and he was sad at the saying and went away grieved for he had great possessions. So he couldn't do it. He said, one thing you lack, you doing good. He loved him. He was already keeping the commandments, right? He says, I've already been keeping this stuff from my youth. He was a righteous young man. But he says, you lack one thing. So all that you have, pick up your cross and follow me. You have treasure in your hand, follow me. Let's keep going. And verse 23, Yeshua looked around about and said unto his disciples, How hardly shall he that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? And his disciples were astonished at his words. But Yeshua answered him and said unto them, Children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God? It's, so, it's, it's sad that people are so concerned with getting that car or getting a certain financial status than serving the Almighty. It's sad, but let's keep going. It is easier for the camel to go through the eye of the needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And then they were astonished at, out of measure, saying among themselves, who then can be saved? And Yeshua looking upon them with man, it is impossible, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. But look what the apostle said. It's kind of windy, so bear with us. Then Peter began uh, to say unto them, we have left all and have followed thee. So just because this young man couldn't do it, there was apostles that stood up and said, I'll do it. We left everything and followed you. What shall we have? Let's keep going. And when he was gone forth into the way, there came uh, uh, and he uh, running unto him and kneeled down and asked him, wait, wait, wrong scripture. I'll jump back. Okay. Uh, verse 29. And Yeshua answered and said, Verily I said to you, there is no man that have left houses and brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children and lands for my sake and, and the gospel's sake, but he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brethren and sisters and mother and children and lands with persecution in the world to come eternal life. Because how do you receive mothers and brothers and sisters? What is a woman that's living holy over six year, 60 years old? They call them mothers. So you get more than one mother and spiritual mother. You get multiple brothers and sisters in the kingdom of God. You get your family in the kingdom of God. It says what persecution? It says you get and you get eternal life. So that young man couldn't do it, but the apostle stood up and said, I'll do it. We've done it. Not only, not only we'll do it, we are doing it as we speak. But my main point is that he says one thing thou lacking. Because sometimes we get comfortable and think, well, I'm keeping the Sabbath and I'm doing this and I'm doing this, even though this isn't this area of my life isn't on point. But man, this is just good enough to get into it. He said, no, one thing thou lacking. So all that you have, pick your cross and follow me. That one thing that you don't want to go all the way, but will be that one thing that send you straight to the lake of fire. It'll be that one thing, that same one thing you don't think is big, that all the Almighty will just overlook that. That'll be the same thing why you ain't going to enter into the kingdom. Let's keep going. Romans chapter 8. Verse 35. It says, oh, I'll say it now when you guys got it in my hand. Good. Romans chapter 8. Go we'll to verse 35. Sean, you got it? Just a little bit. Good. Right, just let me know. Say amen or raise your hand. Amen. Okay, that way I know. Uh, Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, starting at verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Amashiach? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or perils or sword? And the reason why I said that is because money and possession separate that man from the love. It was money. But what are we going to allow in our lives to separate us? I know a person, his, his name, I ain't going to say his name. He was, a, he, was a, he was striving, he was guest, he was coming to serve for like six months, even passed up jobs because it conflicted with the Sabbath. He was trying to stand, he was about, almost at the point to get him baptized, he mentioned getting baptized. But the one thing that took him out of the way is because he didn't want to give up the holidays because his family, because it was him, his sister, and his sister had a son. So it was only four of them because their gra grandparents died on both sides and their mom and dad and his older sister raised them. So it was only them four, period. That's all they had. And they only came together on the holidays. But for him to serve the Lord, as much as hard as that was for him to serve the Lord and be away from his family, he couldn't take the stance. He wants to serve the Almighty, but he needs to give up these holy days and holidays and stop being an idolatry. But that's the only way his family keeps his family together. Hey, you got to give that stuff up. 
are you gonna let your family, that's his one thing. You know, he was obeying all the other stuff, but that one thing, no, that one thing was send you straight to the lake of fire. We get too caught up on how much we're doing right and not focus on how much we're doing wrong, then we don't come to perfection. This is why he has the ministers to come and perfect the people and teach the people on what we need to do. Let's keep going. Matthew chapter 22. So the question is, what's, what's going to separate you? What is that breaking point? Some people say, man, I'll go all the way with the Almighty, but you know what? Just with my little girl, you know, I know what's wrong, but I want to give her a good childhood. I want her to go to the prom. Nah, you know good girl, they're playing music simple. They be doing simple stuff. No, nah, don't let your girl go to no prom. Hey, hey, there's another person he knew if he will hold a standard in his home, his wife was an unbeliever. If he held a standard in his home, you know him, Joey. But if he held a standard in his home, he knew it could lead to him separating from his wife. And he chose to keep his wife than to do the right thing. And he knows the truth. But he doesn't want to cause arguments with his wife. So guess what? That one thing, he went away sad. He went away sad. Just like the rich man went away sad, he went away sad. He knew the truth, but he'd rather keep his marriage. I'd rather lose my marriage than, than, than lose out with the Almighty. I'd rather lose my marriage than lose out in salvation. We got to get, get our hearts right with the Almighty. When, when are we going to have the mindset? It says when you're saved and when you're serving the Almighty, you're the bride of Amashiach. He's the bridegroom coming down from the bride, which is the church. So your spiritual marriage should supersede your natural marriage. They are just flesh. We just talked about that last night. That is just flesh. If you're in the Lord, it says he, he that's in the Lord is what? One spirit. How are you going to get around that? My family's good. I think I got the scripture on the back from last night, sir. I thought. First Corinthians chapter 6. It might be there. If not, it's whatever. First Corinthians chapter 6. There we go. Verse 16. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16. You guys ready? Amen. You ready? Amen. Amen. Okay. Cool. It's this. Yeah. Verse 16. It says, Know ye not that uh know ye not that he that which is joined into a harlot uh, uh, is one body? For two saith he is one flesh. When you get married, you're one flesh. But look at this. But he that is joined unto the Lord is what? One flesh. We did it again. Two days in a row. One spirit. There you go. <laughs> but he that is joined unto the Lord is, is one spirit. He just did it last night. But anyway. <laughs> so, so the main moral of the story is if you're serving the Lord, you're supposed to be one spirit with the Almighty. So why are you putting the fleshly before the spiritual? You're supposed to be putting the spiritual before the fleshly. So that man, Joey, he went away and couldn't go all the way because he wanted to keep that marriage. And that same marriage is going to see you in the lake of fire. You're going to burn up with your wife with him. So let's keep going. Matthew chapter 22. Matthew 22. Oh, oh man. Praise the Almighty. I appreciate you. I say. Matthew, we're going to start at verse 1. You guys ready? Yeah. Yeah. And Yeshua answered and spake unto them again by the parable and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son. And he sent forth his sons and called them and were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. And again he sent forth another servant, saying, Tell them which uh, prepare my dinner, my oxen, uh, and, and my fatlings are killed and all things are ready coming to the marriage but they made light of it and went their way one to his farm and another to his merchandise and the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them and when the king heard thereof he was wroth and he sent forth his armies and destroyed the murderers and, and burned up the city then said he to his servants the wedding is ready but they which were bidden were not were not, were not worthy so these people may lie. The Almighty is calling everyone to salvation. But not everyone's giving heed to the call. So let's keep going. Verse 9. Go ye therefore into the highways, as many as you shall find, and bid them to a marriage. Here comes the call. He says, go everywhere now. He went to his own people, the Hebrew Israelite. He says, go everywhere now. Let's keep going. Uh, so th those servants went out into the highways and gathered together as many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. And the king of, and, and the king came and see a guest, and he saw that the man had not a wedding garment on. We're going to teach you what a wedding a garment is too, dealing with the garments and revelation and all that. But let's keep reading. 
And he said unto him, Friend, how cometh thou here not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then he said unto the servant, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him to the outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. So it says, many are called, few are chosen. The call goes out to everyone, but not everyone can heed the call. The one young man was saying, hey, I've done all this stuff. Hey, you will act one thing. He couldn't give heed to the call. He went away sad. So many are called, but few are chosen. So he came here and says, hey, these people come. Like a lot of people is going to come. Many are called, few are chosen. Say many. Many. Many, many, see? So, okay, many are called, right? So a lot of people is going to come assuming that they're going to be saved and make it into the kingdom. But they're not. They're not. Only few are chosen. Let's keep going. It says, where is your wedding garment at? I'm going to deal with this a little bit. I'll teach you a little bit more. Go to Galatians chapter 3. Go to Galatians chapter 3. Verse 26. Galatians chapter 3, verse 26. Amen. Ready? It says, For ye are all the children of God by faith in Yeshua, uh, Amashiach Yeshua. For as many of you as have um, have been baptized in Amashiach have put on Christ. That is your garment. You put on Christ. So these people come to the Almighty. They come and think they're going to be saved. They come to the wedding because it says the bridegroom is going to come for the church. And they think they're going to make it. And he says, bro, where's your garment? You haven't even put on Christ. Because it says you have not so much as learned Christ. It so be that you were learning, were taught him, that you put away fleshly lusts. But you thinking, it, oh, well, you know, I don't have every, I'm doing all these commandments and, you know, this area, you know, I mean, the Almighty kind of understand, you know, no one's perfect and come up with these cliches while you can't fully submit unto the Almighty and you think that's going to get you in. It says, no, that same thing that you think's not big is big with the Almighty. And who are you to dictate? It's like people, when they try to do their definition of drunk. Oh, I know it's not a sin to drink, but it's a sin to get drunk. But, hey, how about just refrain from that stuff? Take a little drink and keep it pushing or don't drink at all. Because you may not think your little mind might not think you're drunk, but in the Almighty's mind, you're drunk. And the Bible says, be sober-minded. Why even straddle the fence? Uh, you know why I know I live righteous? Because I don't even play with it. I don't need to play with it. I drink some alcohol for the feast days because they drink wine, and that's it. I don't drink no beer. I don't drink none of that. Hey, I'll leave it alone. I'm not condemning a brother that drinks. That's fine, but I don't need to straddle a fence. I don't need to be one more drink from being drunk and outside the will of the Almighty. That's not my testimony. I want to be all the way inside the will of the Almighty. I don't need to straddle a fence. So let's keep going. So Galatians chapter 3, verse 26. It says, for, uh, we says you put on Christ. Luke chapter 13. So these people came to the wedding, and he said, where's your garments at? And he was speechless. Mm -hmm. And he says, cast them out of the outer darkness. Luke chapter 13. Amen. Verse 22. Let's get it. And he went through the cities and the villages teaching, uh, teaching, uh, and journeying toward Jerusalem, then said one of him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto him, because we just read, many are called and what's chosen? Few, right? So many are called, but few are chosen. So he says, are there few to be saved? Let's keep going. He says, strive to enter in, into, in at the straight gate. And when you strive, when you're struggling, when you're striving, it's something contentious. It's not an easy walk in the park. It's not no cruise control. He says, strive to enter in. Hold on. Strive to enter in. At the straight gate for many, for many, remember that word I had you guys say? Many. Many, right? For many, I say unto you, we seek to enter in and shall not be able. Now we just read many are called, few are chosen. Now we just read many will try to enter in. Remember that person that went to the wedding? He said, bro, where's your garments at? And it says he was speechless. He says, cast that person into outer darkness. Now it's going to say many. There's going to be more people. First, there's going to be more people. There's three categories. There's going to be more, a, a multitude of people going to the lake of fire. And then after that, there's going to be a whole bunch of people that's going to try to enter into the kingdom of God. 
And then after that, there's going to be few people that actually enter into the kingdom of God. So there is more people that think they're saved and going to try to enter in and get kicked out than people that think they're saved and actually are saved and actually make it into the kingdom. Because it says many are called, few are chosen. Many will try to enter in, but not be able to. Let's keep going. When once the master of the house has risen up and have uh, shut the door, ye, uh, shall be, and ye begin to stand without and knock up at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. And he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence you are. Then thou shalt begin to say, Have we eaten and drank in thy presence, and thou hast taught in our streets? These preachers go out, these ministers go out teaching you truth, and you disobeying. He taught in your streets. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not. Depart when you are, depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. Because that one thing you didn't want to give up, like the rich young man, that one thing was the same thing that got you out. Keep going. There shall be weeping and gnashing of the teeth. When you shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all of the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourself thrust out, you're going to get to see in the day of judgment, says all is going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And you're going to get to see what the kingdom looks like. You're like, oh, that's Abraham. Oh, that's Daniel with the, you know, the, the lion's den. Oh, that's, you know, Job. Oh, that's Elijah that caught fire and brimstone. You're going to see all of the prophets and you yourself thrust out because you didn't want to repent. Let's keep going. 29. And they shall come from east and from the west and from the north and from the south and shall sit down in the kingdom of God. And behold, they're the last uh, which shall be first and there sh the first shall be last. So he says there's going to be few that make it in. It says strive to enter in the straight gate because many is not going to be able to make it in. So don't let that be your testimony like the rich man. That one thing he didn't want to give up was the one thing to keep him out. Let's keep going though. Matthew 25. Starting at verse 1. Amen. Amen. Let's get it. Start at verse 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, uh-oh, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Who's the bridegroom in Revelation? That's Christ. all mine. That's Christ, right? To meet the bridegroom, right? Five of them. So they were virgins, so they were somewhat pure, right? They were somewhat pure, and they're virgins, and they come to meet the bridegroom. Just like a whole bunch of people are coming to be in the kingdom and talk about getting into the kingdom and talk about new heaven, new earth, and talk about eternal life. There's, they know they know what they need. There's a whole bunch of people that believe this Bible. Let's keep going. Five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil. So you, you knew what you needed to take, but you didn't take enough. You didn't take everything. You didn't make proper preparations for your soul, so you didn't have enough. Let's keep going. But the wise took oil in their vessels and with their lamps. And while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. And, um, and then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather and sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went out to buy, the bridegroom came, and when they were ready, went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterwards came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. I know you not. Watch therefore, for you know not neither the day nor hour when the Son of Man cometh. You don't know when you're going to die either. So you playing around with sin now, what if you die today? You playing around on top of that woman, you play around, and you. what if you have a heart attack right on top of that woman? You died in your sin. In hell, you're going to lift up your eyes. If you die a righteous man, you receive a righteous reward. If you die a sinner, you receive a sinner's reward. And the sinner's reward is the lake of fire. There's no way around that. So let's keep going. 2 Timothy chapter 3. We almost done. It's a little warm. Will it be warm now than warm later? So 2 Timothy 3? Yeah. 2 Timothy chapter 3. What verse? Um, what verse? We're going to start at verse uh, 1. We're going to start at verse 1. You guys ready? Let's get it. This know that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Let's see. For 
Men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce fakers, false uh, accusers, incontent, fierce, despiser of those that are good, trady, high-minded, lover of pleasures more than lover of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power of love thereof from such turn away. Look at this. So look at all these wicked acts, right? But even afterwards, it says these people are going to have a form of godliness, but they deny the power of thereof. These people were the same one like the five unwise vir uh, virgins that came and wanted to come in the door and it was locked. All the other people that knocked on the door and says, I know you not. Because they had a form of godliness, but you denied the power thereof. Go to Titus 1. Next book over, Titus chapter 1, verse 16. Titus 1 16 say amen when you got it amen amen, amen. let's get it 1 16 it says they profess that they know God but in works they deny him being abominable disobedient and unto every good work a reprobate these same people shalom brother shalom our key and you know I want to get into kingdom and we need to learn Hebrew and blah, 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 blah. I'm saved I'm born again they say all these cliches and all this stuff and putting all these memes especially on their Facebook they want to put all me and the Lord is my shepherd they put all this stuff and uh, all this stuff you yeah you profess that you know God but in works you deny him because he says if you love me you keep my commandments it says being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work a reprobate you refuse to do it let's keep going Corinthians I want to show you guys something check this out Corinthians chapter 10 first first Corinthians I'm sorry first Corinthians chapter 10 Start at verse 1. Okay. I want we're gonna read this a little bit slow. I want you to take note of this. Because remember the rich man, right? Remember the rich man? And he was already keeping the commandments, but he didn't want to go all with all the way with the Almighty. So let's see this now. Let's let's lose it in the group. Moreover, brethren. I would not that you should be ignorant how that our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. These are all our fathers, right? Check this out. And all were baptized unto Moses in the cloud of the sea. Especially these camps saying you don't need to be baptized. Look, they were baptized in the Old Testament. That cloud represents a type of shadow of baptism. So how are you going to say you don't need to be baptized? Make no sense. I don't, I don't even need to teach against that doctrine. If you don't need to be baptized, you're too stupid for me to preach to you. It's all throughout the Bible. Let's keep going. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Bear with me my pages are turning because of wind. All right. They were all baptized in, in Moses in the cloud of the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat. So they all ate manna, right? Check this out. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank the spiritual rock that followed them. That rock was Amashiach. That's why when Moses hit the rock, he, went, he hit Christ. But so it says, not only were these people baptized, they drank the same spiritual drink, they ate the same spiritual meat, and, the, and they ate off they ate off of Christ, right? But let's read the next verse, right? Verse 5, but with many of them God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. So these people were baptized, they ate the same spiritual meat, drank the same spiritual drink, and the Almighty still wasn't pleased with them. Why? Let's keep going. Now these things were our examples to the intent that we should not lust uh, after evil things as they also lusted after. Neither be idolatrous as they were some of them. Or as it is written, the people sat down and eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Amashiach as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of the serpents. Now these things happen unto them for examples that they are written for our admonition, our warning, upon whom the ends of the word are come. So these, these show you that you can have a good amount put together, you can even be baptized. But if you ain't trying to go all the way with the Almighty, you still gonna be destroyed. It says these things are written for our examples, that we can't play around. We gotta go all the way or you go all the way to the lake of fire. You go all the way for the Almighty or get thrust out and go to the lake of fire. Last scripture. Matthew chapter 6. Let's 
Sorry, verse 33. Just one scripture. Man. Because, you know, I got to, I got to, I already tore him down. I got to build him up. You know, I tore him down. I got to build it up, right? He says he sent Jeremiah to pluck up, to pull down, and tear down, and to build up. So, Matthew 6. 33 it says but seek first the kingdom of God and all in his righteousness and all things shall be added unto you if you have a wife that does not want to obey and you lose her for righteousness sake if you seek the almighty first you might get that wife back you might get those kids back but you don't know until you seek the almighty all the way I know this brother he was, he was living holy he was a brother and he wanted to get custody of his kids and his kids were old and what happened, so his kids could tell the courts they want to live with him. When his kids came and visit, he let them break the Sabbath. He let them eat certain things they shouldn't, even though he kept the commandments. But he let, because he didn't want to force the laws onto them, because they're going to say, I don't want to live with daddy. And then they're going to say, I want to live with mommy. But he wanted his kids that bad that he let his kids sin against the Almighty. This is a true story. These people compromised the gospel to keep their kids and keep their family. And it's sad. But it says, if you seek first the kingdom of the Almighty, he'll add those things. If you live righteous, it, what if you did, you sinned against the Almighty just to get those kids, and then you get in a car accident, and now the Almighty took them away? I know this woman, we told her, we said, hey, you cannot wear pants. Go to your job and tell them, hey, I need to wear, dress a lot of stuff to the Almighty. I can't be wearing pants. You know, that's against my beliefs. Tell them, oh, well, this is the only job I got, and I'm dyslexic, and it's hard enough. It took me this long to get this job. Guess what? The Almighty took that job from me. All that, when you compromise the gospel, you want to put that job before the Almighty, it's all right. He'll take that job for you. Because anything you put before the Almighty becomes an idol. And we just read, if you're an idol worshiper, hey, you're going to the lake of fire. Anything you put before the Almighty is your idol. Put your job, put your wife, put your kids, put your mother, your father. If you put them before the commandments and for the Almighty, that's your idol. And no idolater is going to inherit the kingdom of the Almighty. So my main thing is, hey, seek first the kingdom. You know, it, it's a pressing way. It seems like it's tough. Sometimes you may miss jobs. Sometimes you may struggle financially. Sometimes you may not have peace in your home. I know, it, hey, we have to be a living sacrifice. He was a sacrifice and we need to be a living sacrifice. It says, I die to myself daily. It says, we bear our cross daily. Every day we sacrifice the things we want to do. It's the Sabbath. I could be at the gym. I could be making some money. There's plenty of times I passed a time and a half and I make, I'm a journeyman, so I make some good money at time and a half. I, but hey, I, I may lose out in money, but I didn't lose out with nothing with God. I didn't lose nothing with the Almighty. I put the Almighty first. You know what I'm saying? All day long, all day strong for the Almighty. No exceptions. And so with all that said and be done, keep standing, give the almighty hand clap, shalom.